Welcome to Sorier Keys Radio Station, a podcast dedicated to music producers, musicians, music lovers, DJs, and music artists who need inspiration, motivation, or encouragement as we all walk on our own artist journey. This is episode five, My Journey to Music Production. I have a long history with music. I was in several choirs, took violin and piano lessons, participated in a local orchestra, and I took all the music theory, musicianship, and vocal classes that my community college had to offer. After completing all three required music theory classes, I also took a class in music composition. When I took the music composition class, I bought score software, software that creates a music score. And a score is a piece of music or a piece of paper that has notes for a musician to play. This was way before tutorial videos were on YouTube and the software itself was very challenging to figure out. I would play the notes into the software with a MIDI keyboard, often resulting in a very messed up looking score or I'd attempt to type them in, often resulting in the piece not sounding how I wanted it to. I couldn't really get it to do what I wanted it to, mostly because I didn't read the manual or take classes on how to use the software. Of course, I could resort to handwriting all my scores, but that takes an extreme amount of time. In order to be very proficient at music composition, you really need to learn software. Another part of learning music composition is learning how musicians play their instrument. So if you're writing for an orchestra, there could be 24 unique instruments or more. Imagine having to understand and know exactly how each instrument is played, what is possible to be played, and so on. There are exceptions, but the majority of us don't have the skill, time, or money to learn every single instrument in an orchestra. I know how to play piano and violin, but even that was not enough to help me in this composition class. It's not just about writing a compelling piece. It's 98% making sure it's playable. In music composition class, I learned how to write for various instruments, including clef sign, note range, what is actually possible as far as playability, etc. For example, a single violin player cannot play a triad. A brass player cannot sustain a note or phrase for long periods of time. A pianist cannot play more than 10 notes at a time. A tenor saxophonist cannot play above or below certain ranges. You have to study and learn all of this information. In short, any score that you make has to be playable or it will not get played. End of story. And as I mentioned before, this is 98% of composition. Sure, you could come up with a melody and some chords on a piano and imagine what the orchestra could do to fill in the gaps, create movement and depth, but the creative process is much more complicated and time consuming. During the composition class I took, each student was assigned a specific instrument to write a piece for. We had to write a piece for a group of mus musicians, and at the end of the semester, they would play it for us. What was my instrument, you may ask? Drums. Please note, I had never played drums before in my life. My professor encouraged us to think outside the box and come up with something unique, working alongside us to make sure that it was in fact playable. Although I knew my piece was stretching the limits, I was assured that it was playable. This was to the dismay of the poor group of drummers who had to play my very experimental piece of music. As I handed it to them and explained the monstrosity before them, I could see they were not impressed. At that point in my life, I thought that I wanted to become a film music composer. I enjoyed how music moved me in film and I wanted to recreate that. I knew that I wanted to make music. I had known that since I could remember. When I play the piano, I can often imagine an entire orchestra behind me, all playing different parts. I can spend hours playing the piano every day, sight reading entire books of music, or randomly playing melodies and harmonies that come to me. I researched music schools at local and far universities, went to visit campuses, but in the end, I was so intimidated by the audition requirements to get into the programs, I gave up. 
That and the thought of learning the SCORE software intimidated me. I really didn't believe I had it in me to learn everything and be successful. I silently gave up on that road to composership. It was fun while it lasted, but it was time to face reality, right? Years passed, life happened, and I went on a ton of adventures. Something I wouldn't have been able to do if I had chosen to become a music composer. And somehow along the way, I met people who were more into music than I was, without all the background in music that I had. As though something bigger was at work, I was introduced to electronic music production, sampling, EQ, mastering, tracks, all the chords and equipment and synthesizers and a community so rich and big and beautiful who from the beginning supported me, encouraging me to keep creating or just genuinely being interested in what I was making. A DAW, DAW, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation, was plopped down in front of me connected to a Krogh synthesizer. Tap, tap, tap went the metronome and I couldn't believe it. I could create an entire piece of music with all the instruments. I didn't have to worry about musicians having a mental breakdown because of my music. And the best part, I could hear the entire orchestra, as it were, in real time. While composition takes years to master, if you can master it at all, music production was like a breath of fresh air. Freeing, liberating, intuitive. Composition is more traditional, classic-based, while production is about testing the limits of technology. Composition relies heavily on understanding how musicians play an instrument. It's also very nerve-wracking to compose a song and hope that whoever plays it gets it and doesn't have a panic attack. You see, the DAW as a workstation is exactly that, a workspace for audio. It's like a canvas for an artist or a score paper for a music composer. Each track is an instrument or group of instruments. It's difficult to explain without visuals, but basically it works on a timeline. And if you press play, the header will move front through the piece, playing any MIDI or audio that you put into each track left to right. Synthetic and electronic sounds are brought alive by none other than the producer at its fingertips. This is as opposed to a group of musicians and conductor if you were composing a piece of music. In my DAW, I can play and record all the sounds into each track by myself, and each track can be populated with all types of sounds, from piano to violins to wind instruments to synthesizers to drums to percussion, etc. There really is no limit, and you can even make your own sounds or buy new sounds if you want. Something you really can't do in composition. In music production, pieces can be tweaked and edited without any qualms until it's published. Oh, and you'll hear it so much before it's published, you'll be sick of it. And even then, after it's been published, it can still be remastered. There's a lot more room for air as a music producer, and you are in complete control of how your music sounds and is pre If a piece of music is in front of a musician, there's not much editing you can do. That's it. But just because I can make anything I want as a music producer doesn't mean it always sounds good either. One skill I am continuously studying is the art of mixing. Mixing means making sure all the parts of a song are in the right place sonically. This has to do with panning, where in the space are the sounds, volume, equalization, which frequencies do each instrument occupy, and so on. Orchestras are somewhat pre-mixed in a way. Sections sit where they sit for a reason, and each part is specifically written for that section with very detailed instructions on how loud to get, etc. With electronic music, a mixing engineer has to understand where each sound goes and correctly place it there so that it's not only in the right place, but also makes room for other sounds and frequencies. If you don't mix your song correctly, the next stage called mastering means your sound will probably become very muddied. The thing with mixing is it comes with words like EQ, compression, Lim limiting or effects like flanger or chorus, all of which were like a completely new language to me. 
Yeah, sure. I knew EQ from my car's radio system. I could just barely understand it. It felt very overwhelming to learn everything, but in a lot of ways, mixing also gives music producers freedom. I find that mixing is as much a part of music producing as anything. Looking at how much I've learned in the past few years from not understanding EQ or compression to having a pretty good idea about it, I'm excited to continue to learn and build my skills. And now with this channel, Sortier Keys, I am building a community of support and encouragement as I continue on this journey. I hope to share what I've learned so far and continue to challenge myself to learn and become proficient at new things. I also hope to encourage others to try out music, whatever that means to you. Ultimately, music production allows us to create intuitively. We can experiment and have fun and hear what, you, what you've made in real time. And the community here is top notch, if I do say so myself. All right, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, consider giving us a like, commenting, and subscribing. Your support means so much. Don't forget to choose the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. I'll talk to you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening.